What, what are some of the uh, aircraft that you worked on? Well, I started working on the SB-2CU-1. I did a lot of work on the OS-2U-1 and the SO-2U-1. And um, then I worked on the F-4U-5. And then they, um, to develop some flat flaps and spoiler controls, they had bought a um, Fairchild F-24, which they could modify. So I went along, I think I made, um, oh, probably 100 flights on that thing. And which, what did you do on these flights? Well, uh, Baker and I, for example, well, <coughs> Um, let's see if I can explain it. The, the XOS-2U1 was an airplane designed for a carrier. So it had to fit onto the elevator, which made it a very short coupled airplane. At the same time, it had to have a very low landing speed in order to land on a carrier. The result of that was that they had to have some huge flaps on the thing, and they used for the first time what are called slotted flaps. And that gave them the lift to get to the low speed. But the control problems were very difficult and bad. And um, among other things, the downwash from these high lift flaps with a shot coupled airplane was so great that the calculations in the wind tunnel stuff indicated that the horizontal tail in certain circumstances could stall. And that meant that the airplane would flip over. Well, we didn't know. We knew it would flip over and go into a dive of some sort. And that was all recognized in the design stage. And again, what was that uh, aircraft? That was the XOS-2U1. And, um, and, and what did that become? Did they have a popular name? Or? I think that was finally called the Kingfisher. Kingfisher, okay. Yeah. That's, that's the one they But it, it appeared... That was a research aircraft. For, well, the... No, it, it actually went in production. It did? Yeah. It, um, it was used on carriers as the OS-2U1, and also it could be used with floats and catapulted, catapulted off from um, cruisers and ships of the, of the line, really. So it was a, they used it as a search plane as well to go out there and, uh, and see who was out there ahead of them? Yeah, it actually was. It um, it actually was used in the Battle of Midway, among other things. So it was a it was a pretty good observation scout mm -hmm. airplane. But at any rate, it had theoretically it had the potential for stalling the horizontal tail. And surprisingly enough, when this guy Baker, who was the chief pilot, was flying it. He accidentally got into the condition that did that. And uh, <coughs> it flipped the airplane over, and he recognized immediately what had happened. And he knew that the only way to get out, fortunately, he was at 12,000 feet when it started. The only way to get out was to crank up the flaps. And it was a hand crank. It took. Um, 80 turns of a hand crank to crank them up. So while they were cranking them up, the airplane was going through some kind of a maneuver. But he got them up and got out. And uh, then we spent months trying to figure out how to cure the airplane of this particular problem. You know, you couldn't turn it over the, to the Navy if it was going to stall the tail and so forth. Turned out that the maneuver 
we did a what they call a step-by-step -step integration to calculation. Another guy and I spent a month calculating this thing step by step. Turned out the airplane flipped over in his back, stalled upside down, was going down, unstalled, stalled again, unstalled, stalled again, kind of went down like that. 